Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 St. Louis University commencement. Now, as you are able, please rise for the posting of colors by the Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology Color Guard.
You may be seated. In addition to the flags brought in by our color guard, you will notice that near the orchestra are flags representing the countries of today's international graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, the university mace is carried by Dr. Marla Berg Wager, Professor Emeritus at the St. Louis University School of Social Work. She is followed by the members of the Board of Trustees, members of the President's Executive Staff, the deans of the colleges and schools, student, faculty, and staff leaders, our student speaker, the 2022 honorary degree recipients, the provost, and the president of St. Louis University. Stage party, you may be seated. The faculty of the schools and colleges of St. Louis University will be escorted by the university marshals. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the endowed chairs and professors and faculty of St. Louis University. <laughs> Faculty may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2022 graduates of St. Louis University.
Graduates, please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our graduates and their family and friends who join us here in Chaffetz Arena for St. Louis University's 2022 commencement ceremony. We know that many of you have come from great distances to be with us here today, and we are so glad that you can be a part of this ceremony. On the stage are the president, members of the university's board of trustees, members of the president's executive staff, representatives of the faculty, staff, and students, the deans of our colleges and schools, and honored guests. Also here with us today are many of this year's Alumni Merit Awardees who represent a broad array of achievements. Thank you to all of them for the outstanding examples they provide to our graduates. And now, as you are able, may I now ask everyone to please stand for the singing of our national anthem to be performed today by St. Louis University's master singers under the direction of Professor David Kowalsik. And please remain standing for the invocation which will follow the national anthem. St. Louis University events, it is our tradition to call on God to watch over and bless us all. I would now like to invite Dr. Amber Johnson, Interim Vice President of Diversity and Innovative Community Engagement, and Father David Sawalski of the Society of Jesus, Vice President of Mission and Identity, to offer our invocation. Good morning, graduates. Good morning, family and friends. Good morning, Billikens. We begin by honoring the Billiken lives we lost, the lives lost due to war abroad, and the lives lost due to the scourge of violence in our nation and at home. I have been taken by these words offered by a young woman who lost her battle with cancer recently. You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore for you to decide to be happy. It was a hard year to be certain, yet we confronted the challenges. All of us, and particularly you, our graduates, whom we celebrate this morning, you persevered, succeeded, and we hope decided to be happy. Although this year has been hard on all of us for many different reasons, we are also overcome with great joy and hope. Many of you made lifelong friends who carried you through those tough times. You fell in love with the city, with each other, with yourselves, with learning, with nature, and with research. And all of you survived and even thrived 
through some of the hardest years academia has ever experienced. So today, choose to be happy and celebrate yourself, celebrate each other, and lead with gratitude. We give glory to God who created each of you and brought you to St. Louis University. We are grateful for your accomplishments, your generous hearts, and the love freely given to you by your families and friends, and the love you have shared with others as well. St. Ignatius of Loyola writes in the spiritual exercises, let us ask the Lord to give us an intimate knowledge of the many gifts we have received, so that filled with gratitude, we may in all things love and serve others. Today you stand at a three-way axis. That will, axis will never be more clear. In one direction is your childhood, those experiences and everything that brought you to St. Louis University. In another direction is your experiences as a SLU student, which includes all the trials, triumphs, life, lessons, and relationships that prepare you for your third axis, your future. Be very clear that in this moment, your job is to love all three of those axes because they are all a part of you and your journey. Black feminist, academic poet, and healer Alexis Pauline Gums writes, there are at least three ways to love, as you were, as you are, and as you will be. I love you, that means I choose all three. Today, choose you. Choose hope, choose happiness, choose futurity. Let us pray. Great and awesome creator of all that is good, we pray you send your Holy Spirit upon us and bless us, most especially our graduates of the class of 2022. Bless all who have sustained and encouraged them in their studies, most especially their parents and families, friends, our professors, and the university staff. As they set out from this place, may our graduates know that SLU is also and always their home. And Lord, keep us mindful of our unending mission that wherever and however we find ourselves in the years to come, that our task is to seize the opportunity to shape our world for your greater glory and to place ourselves in compassionate service to all whom we meet each day. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Johnson and Father Sawalski. Please be seated. Now it is time for the singing of St. Louis University's varsity song by the Master Singers. This song was composed more than 100 years ago and was performed as the university's alma mater at commencements until sometime in the 1960s. During SLU's bicentennial year in 2018, we revived it, and it has quickly become a new SLU tradition. You are welcome to join in singing with the Master Singers. The Varsity Songs lyrics can be found on the last page of your program. Thank you. 
city, hark to our song. Proudly our colors fly, red, white, and blue. Now let the chorus go St. Louis you. Thank you, Master Singers, for that wonderful performance. It is now my privilege to introduce the president of St. Louis University. Dr. Fred Postello became the university's 33rd president in July of 2014. He is the first permanent lay president in SLU's 204-year history. Under his leadership, the university has grown in stature and enrollment. The value of your SLU education has also grown during his tenure as the university has been recognized for its academic excellence, research, dedication to its students, commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and to serving our neighbors and the underserved in our community. Dr. Bastello is leading SLU's $500 million Accelerating Excellence Campaign, the largest fundraising campaign in the university's history. The campaign, which is on course to exceed its goal, has already set multiple university records for annual gift totals. As the campaign closes in its final weeks, its long list of achievements will only grow. And in the past two years, he has been a steady hand and a caring leader as SLU dealt with the effects of COVID-19 on our campuses. Please join me in welcoming the president of St. Louis University, Dr. Fred Pastello. Good morning. Greetings, class of 2022. I want to welcome our parents, family, friends, and guests. We are delighted to share this momentous occasion with you. Graduates, it really is an honor to be here with you today. Congratulations. Today, you join two centuries of Billiken graduates. I am proud of you and all that you have accomplished. You pushed through tough assignments that challenged and stretched you. You navigated the personal dynamics of group projects. You preserved through clinicals and practicums and internships that gave you a sense for the day-to-day -day work life of a career in your field. You spent many long nights researching and writing papers and capstone projects with nothing but Einstein's coffee to keep you focused. And your graduation gift is a new and improved dolphin pond. How about that? Of course, your accomplishments extend beyond your studies. You are a generation of unprecedented creativity and resilience. You rose to the demands of challenge after challenge. You adjusted, you adapted, and you remain committed to your goals. 
Many of you served on the front lines of COVID response during your clinical experiences in vaccine and testing clinics or as contact tracers. All of you pulled together as a community to care for yourselves and to care for one another. Be proud of the hard work you put in and the struggles you endured. Be proud of how you have grown in compassion. Have faith that the wisdom you have learned inside and outside of the classroom will serve you well in the years ahead. Know that you will be a force for good and that you will set the world on fire. Graduates, please take a moment to join me in acknowledging and thanking your loved ones and all those who have supported you, sustained you, and nurtured you and invested so much in your success. Thank you. Next, please join me in acknowledging our faculty and staff who have stretched your minds, sharpened your skills, and fostered your development. Let's thank them. We are also mindful of those who could not join us, particularly those loved ones in our families and in our community who passed away this painful year. In remembrance of those we hold in our hearts, those we lost this year, and all those who have gone before us throughout history, we have placed an empty chair on the stage adorned with flowers. Let us now share a moment of silence and reflect upon them and our memories. Thank you. Graduates, when you chose SLU, you had a sense that it would be a good fit for you. You entered with an academic profile that placed you in the top 10% of students in our country. Many of you, like me, were the first in your family to attend college. Now, regardless of your path, I am confident that you realize that here at SLU, ethics and morals inform action. Each person is valued and integrity is vital. We dare to choose courage over comfort and justice over indifference. You know well that there are three core parts of our SLU identity. We are Catholic, we are Jesuit, and we are a university. As a Catholic institution, our mission reflects our extraordinary vocation. We are responsible for creating communities of wholeness. As a Jesuit institution, we ask knowledge for what? It is our work at the frontiers of culture and the margins of society. The lines of service and scholarship there are blurred. Our research is grounded in our involvement in the world and refined through scholarly debate. As a university, the complexities of society are laboratories for thought and experimentation. We rigorously pursue knowledge and pass that knowledge on to each generation. And at the intersection of academic excellence and compassionate healthcare is our delivery of informed medicine. If we have done our job, and I know that we have, you leave SLU with more questions than you entered. And others are sure to ask questions of you along your journey. I am confident that for the rest of your life, when you tell people you graduated from St. Louis University, they will ask you, what is a Billiken? <laughs> the Billiken's appearance may be difficult to describe, but you know one when you see one. The Billiken looks like the quest to understand our shared humanity and to fill our unquenchable thirst for truth and our desire to explore life's vital questions. The Billiken looks like an engaged citizen, one that compassionately seeks common ground, 
The Billiken looks like a faith that does justice and upholds human dignity. The Billiken looks like authenticity and showing up, being seen, and seeing others. Graduates, as I describe our mascot, it is clear that the Billiken looks like all of us and acts like all of you. As As Billikens, you symbolize the hope that it is possible to make the world the way it ought to be. Your generation has more knowledge, more data, and more tools at your disposal than any other generation in history. I have seen the depths of your work ethic and the breadth of your compassion. You are fierce advocates for inclusion and justice. The things you do and the words you use are important to you. You leave the slew arches academically gifted, research-oriented, empathetic, and culturally aware. You enter a world that is in need of daring leadership and contemplative action. You are prepared to share joy with those who are low, direction with those who are lost, and hope with those who feel despair. Your pride radiates and will reverberate throughout the communities in which you will serve. Remember, you will always have a home at St. Louis University and will forever share in the abundant resources of each other and your alma mater. SLU is not just the university you went to. It is the place you go from. Wherever your path takes you, lead with love and mercy. Make things the way they ought to be. And when asked what a Billiken looks like, you show them. I wish you Godspeed. Hello, graduates, family, friends, colleagues, and honored guests. My name is Mike Lewis. I have the honor and the privilege of serving as St. Louis University's provost. I am pleased that we are joined today by members of our distinguished faculty, representing all of St. Louis University's colleges and schools. They have seen our graduates through years of classes, papers, labs, projects, and final exams. For two of the past four years, they have, with our students, learned creative and innovative ways to pursue knowledge. They've had to adapt with our students over two of these past four years. They've had to learn new technologies, new pedagogies in that pursuit of knowledge. To be short, they've been resilient, incredibly resilient with our students. And so it is most fitting that they are here today to celebrate one final success with their students. The formative partnership between faculty and students lies at the heart of the academic enterprise. All faculty are by turns transmitters of knowledge, purveyors of culture, initiators of professional training, mentors, role models, confidants, and in some cases, research colleagues of our students. The faculty revel in learning both their students' learning and their own. And they are committed to intellectual and personal development in recognition of the many key roles our faculty play in helping SLU graduates to develop both educationally and as whole persons capable of making a difference in the world. I now ask all faculty in attendance to stand and receive the thanks of those assembled here today. Thank you, faculty. Now it is my 
pleasure to introduce a speaker from the graduating class. Justice Hill is graduating from the College of Arts and Sciences. A native of Columbia, South Carolina, Justice is majoring in political science and minoring in American studies. He is the president of SLU's African American Male Scholars Initiative and a residential advisor in the diversity and global citizenship learning community. Justice has also served in the Student Government Association, written for One World Social Justice magazine, and is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. He is a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. scholar and was inducted into the National Residency Hall Honorary. This fall, Justice will be at Duke University pursuing a master's degree in divinity. Please join me in welcoming our 2022 student speaker, Justice Hill. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? So my name is Justice Hill, and I'm so blessed to say that I'm a graduating senior here at SLU, where I'm receiving my Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and American Studies. So greetings, class of 2022, to President Pastello, Provost Lewis, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, family, and friends. Today we are gathered here for a celebration of the success, dedication, and endurance that the class of 2022 has displayed during our time right here at St. Louis University. As we all sit together in one location for what may be the last time in our lives, I ask each of you to take a trip down memory lane. Think about when you arrived at St. Louis University. Think of your first class on campus, your first college party, your first bad grade in college, Think of the all-nighters, study groups, floor meetings, office hours, academic events, sporting events, snow days, and love that you felt here at St. Louis University. Our college days have swiftly passed, and the world is waiting on us to make our mark. My fellow Billikens, right now you are sitting next to the next generation of leaders that will have an indelible impact in the world. However, we must know that this journey will not be easy. We are the conquering class. Can anyone recall the spring break of 2020 where we never returned to campus? Due to COVID-19, classes were canceled, businesses shut down, and everyone was sent home. We all were enrolled into St. Louis Zoom University and forced to adapt to the new normal. We all battled Zoom fatigue, social and physical distancing, rapid COVID testing, isolation housing, vaccination shots, and the booster vaccine. Yet, we conquered it all and are here today for a reason. Many of us have on our masks today. Yet, when you leave this building, I challenge you to take off your mask to the world and be who you are unapologetically. Do not allow your circumstances or people around you to prevent you from doing what you want to do in this lifetime and continue to work with a higher purpose and greater good. Some of us today are graduating summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and some are even graduating, thank you, Lordy. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet, despite this, we must all continue to stay focused and keep our eyes on the prize. There are still many changes that need to be made and problems to be solved in the world, and we can truly be the change that we want to see and find the solutions to these problems. Problems such as injustice, racism, discrimination based on gender, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. We have the capacity to knock down these walls of oppression and transform them into tall sequoia trees with extensive branches of justice. When I first arrived to SLU, I couldn't imagine this day. I stand on the backs of many people that came before me and made it possible for me to be here today. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams with the capabilities to leave an indelible impact on the world. 
All of us here today are what our ancestors dreamed and hoped for. We cannot allow our ancestors' dreams to be in vain. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of the world the things that are in store for the St. Louis University Class of 2022. Before I leave you today, I must provide you with a reminder of what being a St. Louis University graduate encompasses. I will spell it out for everyone with the acronym St. Louis Graduate. In this life, we should S, strive to achieve all goals that we seek in life, while A, accepting the challenges that life throws at us. We should I, impact our communities in a positive way, while N, never giving up. We should T, take a stand for what is right, while L, loving all unconditionally. We should O, open doors for others, while U, understanding that there are no limits to what we can achieve in life. We should I, inspire others to be the best version of themselves each day, while S, self-caring so that we can reach our full potential and destination. We should G, grow tall enough to wear the crown of high purpose and greater good above our heads, while R, running our race with patience. We should A, answer the calling in our lives while D, dreaming big. We should U, use our voices and talents for change while A, aspiring for greatness. We should T, thank those that have supported us along the way. In class of 2022, in case you forgot anything that I mentioned throughout this speech, you should remember to E, enjoy life and smile. Class of 2022. Class of 2022, as we turn our tassels on this day, as St. Louis University graduates, we must not turn our backs on the communities and people that raised us and supported us. Our names are not the only names on our diplomas. As we leave St. Louis University today, we can know in our hearts that we are moving onward and upward in the right direction, and that the world is going to have to make room for the impact that we will have. We all answered the call to study at St. Louis University, and we all made the decision to attend SLU. And now our assignment and call to SLU is complete. The phone is ringing again, and it is time for us to answer our next call and continue to take action to make the world and our communities a better place. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you, Justice. It is now my honor to introduce SLU's 2022 commencement speaker. Mr. Andreas Gallegos is the chair of the National Council on Disability, the nonpartisan federal agency that advises the President, Congress, and federal agencies on policy matters affecting people with disabilities in the United States. A U.S. Air Force veteran, Mr. Gallegos served in various roles on the Council since his congressional appointment in 2018, but began playing a leading role in disability rights long before then. He established a national disability rights practice in Chicago at Robbins DeMonte Limited. He continues in that role as a shareholder, concentrating on disability rights and health care law. In addition, Mr. Gallegos is a highly sought-after lecturer on disability movement, health equity, and civil and legal rights of people with disabilities, as well as the application of federal non-discrimination laws to health care providers. He is also a graduate of St. Louis University, earning his law degree in 1993. We are very proud to call him a SLU alumnus. Please welcome St. Louis University's 2022 commencement speaker, Mr. Andres Gallegos.
within a couple minutes, you will be sons and daughters forever of St. Louis University. And I love that. So class of 2022, to my very younger brothers and sisters, felicidades, congratulations to you all. What I love about that reference to sons and daughters is it connotes relationships, a sense of family, a sense of community. It connects us to one another, and given the state of affairs presently, that connection is critically essential. President Pastello, trustees, distinguished guests, my fellow honorees, Student Government Association President Fonseca, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. What an absolute pleasure and honor to have this opportunity to speak with you, the 204th graduating class of St. Louis University. Among the 3,433 graduates of this year's class, there are 255 graduates representing other countries throughout the world, as you see in display of flags. From Albania to the Philippines and 57 countries in between, there are at least 37 religions practiced among you. The youngest of this class is 19 years old, the oldest 67. Thirty-two percent of the class are people of color or of different minority groups. There are 63 military veterans in this graduating class. And, and among... <laughs> and among other honors and achievements, this class has produced four Fulbright recipients and 93 Alpha Sigma Nu members, which is the Honor Society of Jesuit colleges and universities for those students who have distinguished themselves in scholarship, loyalty, and service. Worthy of applause. Now, to address the obvious, I am a person with exceedingly gray hair. I blame that on my two kids, now adults. I am also a person with disability class of 1996. Just three years after I graduated law school, my family and I were in a horrific automobile accident. By the grace of God, I was the only one severely injured. I sustained a spinal cord injury resulting in quadriplegia. In a fraction of a second, I joined a beautiful community, a community which today consists of over 61.4 million people in the United States and in our territories. One out of every four persons in the United States has a disability, a community that grows every single day. For example, as a result of the pandemic, over 1.7 million people have recently joined our community, those people with long COVID. If we were recognized as a minority group, we'd be the largest. We are by far the most welcoming. We do not discriminate. The disability community is represented by every age, ethnicity, race, religion, gender, socioeconomic status, and political persuasion. For me, the more the merrier. It makes it easier for us collectively to view disability as a natural part of the human condition. Not something to be avoided, not something to be feared, and not something that needs to be cured. Now, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. But for a considerable time after my accident, I struggled to see that reason. I was ashamed of my disability. For I had internalized all of the societal and cultural negative views of disability. Long-held views born from state-sanctioned discrimination. Discrimination in the forms of a eugenics movement. A movement that for decades sterilized persons with disabilities against their will. In many cities throughout the country, for just over a century, up until the mid-1970s, there existed ugly laws, ordinances that made it illegal for us to be seen in the streets. It took a number of years for me to fully embrace my disability, 
But once I did, I found meaning for my accident. The key, however, was embracing my disability. In other words, giving myself permission to love the new me. You know, there's truth to the saying, you can't love others if you first don't love yourself. The disability corollary to that is, you can't expect others to feel comfortable with your disability if you first are not. And now, I'm not shy in telling you, I love me some new me. And to paraphrase the young philosopher Lizzo, I'm not the man that I was or used to be, but hey, I might be better. But I didn't know that back then, 26 years ago, I didn't know that I could get to this point. You should know that my spinal cord injury is not what's disabling, nor is my wheelchair limiting. What is disabling and limiting are structural barriers that preclude me from entering into buildings, from accessing transportation, from obtaining thorough and equivalent healthcare examinations as are provided to you, housing and technology designed without me in mind, Limiting and disabling are the attitudinal barriers and ableism that view disability as a life not worth living or a life devoid of quality. Disability does and can occur to anyone at any time. If you or your immediate family have not been graced by disability, you eventually will. And that is particularly true if you live long enough, which I hope you do. And in anticipation of that, I say, Welcome. There may be many things that happen to you in your life that you not fully understand the reasons why. And that's okay. Give yourself time. Now, in the nearly 26 years since my injury, I can share with you that I have rarely received expressions of sympathy or pity. That is, as it relates to my disability. I get that quite often, though, when people find out I'm a lawyer. Oh, you poor thing. Is it curable? How did that happen? Well, that happened because St. Louis University School of Law opened its doors to me in 1989. The education that I received here is the foundation for my ability to protect the rights of people with disabilities throughout the country. It is the foundation for my advocacy for people with disabilities. It is in part why I received a congressional appointment to the National Council on Disability in 2018 and why, on the afternoon of his inauguration, President Biden appointed me as a council's chairman. Although a part of me believes he wanted me for my body. <laughs> the education that you have received here is your foundation for connecting with others, wherever your past may hereafter lead as you are graduates of a university nationally recognized for its academic excellence, the sixth best of all Catholic universities in America, a university that ranks among the top 25 universities in educating international scholars and for sending students abroad for academic experiences, a university that consistently ranks among the top 10 of private colleges throughout the country for making an impact from community engagement, a university that deliberately works to make a difference, to instill within the students a sense of responsibility. Responsibility for self, responsibility for each other, responsibility for the communities where you study and reside, responsibility for explaining what is a Billiken. Though far from perfect, the university strives every day to get better. It's the education that you've received at St. Louis University in and out of the classroom provides you with a foundation to be deliberate and purposeful in your life. The foundation to answer the question, as the Dalai Lama suggests, not what is the meaning of life, but what meaning will you give to your life? As the Jesuit educational tradition calls, to lead where possible, to serve where needed. As a class, you've demonstrated this. For in the aftermath of the George Floyd killing, in support of Black Lives Matter movement and racial justice, you, together with faculty and staff, protested on and off campus. From the School of Medicine's White Coats for Black Lives, prayer vigils on campus, and events of Occupy SLU Week, to your response to the facing of the clock tower and advocating for greater availability 
of on and on, on campus mental health services. You work to make this community better, to make this university better, to build upon the clock hour, tower accords, to finally realize transformation of the African American Studies program into a full and equal academic department. You did this. You are leaving this university better than when you entered, and that is how your future success should be measured. And you did so amidst unprecedented challenges, challenges in the form of a global public health crisis that began in your second semester sophomore year. A pandemic in the nearly two and a half years has resulted in six million deaths globally and over one million deaths here in the United States. The University's Center for Vaccine Development was at the forefront of the COVID-19 vaccination testing, conducting phase three vaccination trials. Now, the public health response to the pandemic necessitated shifting from in-person learning to remote learning virtually overnight. Faculty and staff had to adjust on the fly and develop course materials to be taken online. Jay Hagen, the university's registrar, estimates that you missed 360 in-person class hours. Nandini Fonseca, your SGA president, estimates that you've done your awful best to make up those equivalent lost hours in bars in Soulard and Forest Park. Well done, class. Well done. <laughs> the pandemic has put a strain on the sense of community and relationships. It isolated friends. It isolated families. It added a different level to the stress that is inherent with being a student in a competitive and rigorous academic university. It caused many students financial hardship, hardship for the loss of part-time jobs. It had severe impact on mental health, exacerbating depression and anxiety. It caused and contributed to loss of life. You as a class experienced loss. You experienced grief. It would be remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge that May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. If you suffer from depression, anxiety, or stress, know that you're not alone. Give yourself room to breathe and to love you some you. Lead where possible. There's no lack of opportunities for you to lead. As the German writer and statesman Goethe has stated, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. Today, our politics are as divisive as they ever have been. It's fair to say they are the most divisive that I've seen uh, during my lifetime. There are attacks on civil rights that affect people of color, people with disabilities, the LGBTQ community, and others. Attacks on the independence and rights of women, attacks on voting rights, disinformation and conspiracies abound that deliberately blur the lines between fact and fiction, that deliberately divide us. We need a generation of principled leaders, leaders capable of independent and critical thought, that believe in science, that believe in facts, that will speak truth to power, that believe in exercising political power to address the needs and solve the problems of the people. We need you to lead. Serve where needed. There's no lack of opportunity to serve, to care for the environment, to care for the homeless, to feed the needy, to help the communities that have been historically marginalized or disenfranchised, to aid refugees, to welcome immigrants, to build resilient communities, to speak out against injustice, to champion the issues that you've done so here, to vote, to join me in addressing the needs of people with disabilities. We need you to serve. In closing, my hope for you is that you utilize the foundation of your education at St. Louis University to achieve all of your dreams and to enhance the communities where you are, that you have meaningful and purposeful lives, and that you lead where possible and you serve where needed. Congratulations, Billikens. God bless and Godspeed.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Gallegos. It is now my privilege to present Mr. Joseph Conran, the chairman of the St. Louis University Board of Trustees. <laughs> President Pistello, I have the honor to inform you that the Board of Trustees by virtue of the right granted to it by the state of Missouri, has voted to authorize you to confer upon these following persons honorary degrees in recognition of their singular achievements. Dr. Isaiah Crawford, Mr. Andres Gallegos, Mr. Patrick P. Lee, and Mr. Mrs. Joan and Mr. John Batteron. Now, to honor Dr. Crawford, I invite University Trustee Martha Uhorn forward. Good morning. Isaiah Crawford grew up in St. Louis and was the first in his family to graduate from college. After earning his bachelor's degree here at St. Louis University, he earned both a master's and doctoral degree in clinical psychology from DePaul University. He became a professor of psychology at Loyola University of Chicago and later served as the dean of Loyola's College of Arts and Sciences all while maintaining a private psychotherapy practice. Dr. Crawford left the Midwest to serve as provost and chief academic officer at Seattle University. After eight years at Seattle University in 2016, he was named president of the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, Washington, a prestigious liberal arts university. In 2001, Dr. Crawford was selected as chairman of the board of directors for the National Academ Association of Independent Colleges and Universities. He also sits on several other boards. For his commitment to creating inclusive learning environments for the next generation of visionary leaders and lifelong learners, the degree of Doctor of Education, honoris causa, will be conferred upon Isaiah Crawford. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon Dr. Isaiah Crawford the degree of Doctor of Education and declare that his name will be inscribed forever on the university's role of honorary graduates. To recognize Mr. Andres Gallegos, I ask University Trustee Jimmy Edwards to come forward. As Chair of the National Council on Disability and shareholder at Robbins DeMont, Limited, Andreas 
Gallegos is dedicated to improving the lives of those with disabilities. Through his legal practice, Mr. Gallegos and his team educate people with disabilities and their advocates about their rights and accessible health care. He leads the firm's collaborative efforts with hospitals, healthcare systems, dental and other providers to ensure persons across all categories of disabilities receive the opportunity to benefit from their facilities and services. He and his team also provide training to health care providers on their federal non-discrimination mandates, disability etiquette, and cultural competency. In addition, Mr. Gallegos serves on the boards of directors of national and Chicago-based nonprofit cross-disability advocacy organizations, namely the American Association on Health and Disability, Disability Lead, and Access Living of Metropolitan Chicago. For his tireless advocacy on behalf of persons across all types of disabilities, the degree of Doctor of Public Service, Honoris Casa, will be conferred upon Andreas Gallegos. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon Mr. Andres Gallegos the degree of Doctor of Public Service and declare that his name will be inscribed forever on the university's roll of honorary graduates. To honor Mr. Patrick Lee, I ask University Trustee Pat Sly to become forward. A proud St. Louis University graduate, Patrick Lee is the founder of Enidyne Incorporated, one of the premier manufacturers of industrial and aerospace shock absorption and vibration isolation products. Mr. Lee also acquired other companies to create International Motion Control, a worldwide conglomerate of manufacturing firms. In 2007, when he sold IMC, Mr. Lee directed part of the proceeds to establish the Patrick P. Lee Foundation, a private charitable foundation that provides funding to advance education and improve the lives of those affected by mental illness. It has given millions of dollars in scholarships to students who are pursuing careers in manufacturing and other engineering and technical fields. The foundation also has supported local, state, and national mental health advocacy efforts. In 2013, Mr. Lee received the prestigious Horatio Alger Award. He has also received several St. Louis University honors. For his commitment to sharing his success with others and supporting those who care for those with mental health issues, the degree of Doctor of Technology, honoris causa, will be conferred upon Patrick Lee. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, 
I hereby confer upon Mr. Patrick Lee the degree of Doctor of Technology and declare that his name will be inscribed forever on the university's roll of honorary graduates. Finally, to recognize Mrs. Joan and Mr. John Baderot, I ask University Trustee Bo Mian to come forward. In 1969, St. Louis University alumnus and my cousin, John Batterot, and a partner recognized the need for stronger trade schools and established what became Batterot College, a network of trade schools stretching across the Midwest. After Mr. Batterot sold the educational network in 2003, he and his wife Joan put their energies full-time into charitable work through the Joan and John Batterot Foundation. During the last two decades, they have provided funding to numerous nonprofit organizations, primarily in the St. Louis area. In 2005, convinced that education was the most enduring path out of poverty, the Vaterots and other concerned St. Louisans founded Access Academies. The enterprise uses enrichment programs and scholarships to propel historically underserved middle school students through high school and on to college. In fact, today we are joined by two Access Academy graduates who are graduating from SLU, Dennis Vasquez and Damon Alexander. St. Louis University partnered with Access Academies with the St. Louis University School of Education. For their commitment to social justice and helping underserved students find their path through education, the degree of Doctor of Education, Honoris Causa, will be conferred upon Joan and John Benarat. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon Mrs. Joan and Mr. John Vatterut the degree of Doctor of Education and declare that their names will be inscribed forever on the university's roll of honorary graduates.
We now come to the highlight of our ceremony, the multiple conferring of degrees. This is a two-part procedure, the conferral ceremony. First, the candidates for degrees will be presented by the respective deans of the colleges and schools of the university. Then the president will confer the degrees. I would ask you to hold your applause until the president has finished speaking. We will begin with the College of Arts and Sciences. The candidates from the other schools will be presented in the order in which they appear in your program. Interim Dean Lavoie. Would the candidates for degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences please rise as you are able. President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Lavoie, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for the degrees from the School of Medicine please rise as you are able? <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Medicine, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Jacobs, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the School of Law please rise as you are able. <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Law, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Johnson, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented, the degrees for which they were nominated. And I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the College of Philosophy and Letters please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Philosophy and Letters, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Rosenberg, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever.
with the candidates for degrees from the Richard A. Schaeffert School of Business. Please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the Richard A. Schaeffert School of Business, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Gupta, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the, would the candidates for degrees from Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of Parks College of Engineering, Aviation, and Technology, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Dulman, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the Trudy Bush Valentine School of Nursing please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the Trudy Bush Valentine School of Nursing, I have the honor of presenting these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Willis, by the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the Edward and Margaret Doisy College of Health Sciences please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the Edward and Margaret Doisy College of Health Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Austin, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever.
with the candidates for degrees from the College for Public Health and the School of Social Work. Please rise as you are able. President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the College for Public Health and Social Justice and the School of Social Work, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Barnage, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the School for Professional Studies please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pistello, on behalf of the faculty of the School for Professional Studies, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Burek, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Would the candidates for degrees from the School of Education please rise as you are able. <laughs> President Pastello, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Education, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degrees for which they have been recommended. Dean Ritter, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Louis University, I hereby confer upon those whose names were presented the degrees for which they were nominated, and I further declare them sons and daughters of St. Louis University forever. Let's give another round of applause to all of our graduates. I now invite, I now invite Father David Sawalski of the Society of Jesus to confer a blessing upon us. There is a story of healing found in the Gospel of Luke, and only there Jesus heals ten lepers and sends them to the priests who verify that they've been cured according to the law of Moses. But only one comes back to say thank you. It's a puzzlement, but of course, maybe to be healed from such a dread ailment was so exciting, so compelling that they just had to go and tell anyone and everyone to show themselves that this great thing had happened. I mention this because a great thing has happened today, but don't forget to say thank you to all of those, especially those gathered here, who helped make this day possible. Let us pray. 
Gracious and loving God, through your gentle love and powerful spirit, you have brought us to this long-awaited moment. You are the source of faith who has enlightened and enlivened these men and women. You are the source of hope who has led them through pandemic and grief, through loss and discouragement. You are the source of love who has encouraged and supported them day by day. In gratitude to you, we celebrate and honor them. Bless all who have guided and sustained them towards this moment, parents and grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts and uncles, teachers and mentors on and off campus, friends and companions on their journey. As you send forth these women and men to set every corner of the world on fire with your message of life and joy, of hope and justice, send them with the guiding breath of your Holy Spirit. Bless their feet that they may go where you desire them to go. Bless their hands that they may accomplish your work. Bless their eyes that they may recognize the divine spark that is in each person they meet. And bless their hearts that those hearts may beat in time with yours. And finally, in the words of St. Paul, we pray. Glory be to God who by his mighty work, mighty power at work within us, is able to do far more than we would ever dare ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. To God may be given the glory from generation to generation, through endless ages, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thank you, Father Swolsky. We are nearing the end of our commencement exercises today, but before we do, we want to remind the graduates to please remain seated until after the stage party and the faculty have left the arena, and then please wait and follow your marshal's directions. We ask that graduates and their families and friends meet on the concourse level of Chaffetz Arena. To the class of 2022, while this day marks the end of your time as a student it's the beginning of your lifelong connection as an alumna or alumnus of St. Louis University. Your SLU family is composed of more than 135,000 mission-driven and successful alumni around the world. And wherever your life's journey takes you, there will be an opportunity to remain connected to your St. Louis University family. SLU is still your home and you will always be welcome here on campus. For those graduates who would like to get a picture taken with President Pastello, that will take place in the Chaffetz Arena practice gym. And now, a final word from Dr. Pastello. Okay, I have one final request of you graduates. When I point to you, I want you, with great enthusiasm, to say the word forever. <laughs> you are now, graduates of the class of 2022, members of the Billiken family forever. <laughs>